So let's talk about why we want to do C programming. Well, there could be many reasons, but one main reason you want to do C specifically is you want something that has a high degree of control and efficiency. Okay. The con why you wouldn't is if you're just trying to do a quick calculation, if you're trying to do something that doesn't care about this, often it's not the best way of approaching programming. So if you're just trying to do some calculations, you'll probably want to go with Python or MATLAB because it's much easier if you just want to make a matrix or an array or whatever and add 15 to each of the elements, it's a much simpler process. If your boss is going to fire you because it's taking too long to write the code, uh, it might just be that C is not right. Because one thing about C is that it often takes much longer to code the exact same thing uh, as it does in another language. And so when you have a a calculation that's that's important to be done fast, but the program's going to calculate it in a tenth of a second, 20 minutes to write it in C versus, versus one minute in MATLAB, that's a huge difference. So you got a tenth of a second, and let's say you've got two tenths of a second. Obviously, one minute plus two tenths is much less than 20 minute and one tenth. But if you if you're going to run this program a billion times, then this part doesn't doesn't matter as much because you're multiplying this by a billion. So this all of a sudden becomes a much bigger factor. So if it's just something that you won't be running a billion times and this makes a huge difference in the difficulty of of uh, the, the actual writing of the program, then you really want to go with with the one that applies better. That's kind of the pros and cons of C. Um, C also doesn't have a lot of the stuff built in. C is is meant to be a meaning it uh, can run on a lot of not complicated systems. Uh, it doesn't require a bunch of new computational technology to run it. So it's lightweight and it is procedurally based. Meaning it's meant to do this, then this, then this, and then repeat this, and then this, and then this. That That's kind of what it's structured as. It's it's meant to follow a series of instructions, basically, procedurally based. When you're looking for often you'll go to something like C++. And what C++ is, is it sort of seems like a build on to C, right? Because I mean, you just got the two pluses after it. It's just C with some extra stuff on it, right? Um, that is not exactly true. Much of the software written using C is using C++, and much that is written using C++ is using C. There's a lot of overlap between the two, but C++ isn't exactly just that, a build off of C with some additional stuff. One aspect of this that is the case is uh, if we look at the term backwards compatibility, this means if you, if you have an old program and you want it to be able to work on the new system, then it's backwards compatible. So the new program can open old stuff. Um, with C++, it's not fully backwards compatible with C. So if you try and open a C program in C++, uh, it is not always the case that it'll work. It often will. Uh, much of what we've covered, you can just pop into a C++ program and you'll be able to run it just fine, just like normal. 
But what C++ really is, is it's a object-oriented programming language. And with that, it's got some more layers of abstraction. So this means that when you're performing certain operations, it'll sort of simplify the process. It'll, it'll have built-in things to combine those procedures into more simple operations. So it'll allow you to do uh, several complicated things, but access it as sort of one tool. And so this is abstracting this, this set of operations into a tool or set of tools that uh, makes this process easier. So C++ can kind of be thought of as C with these on top, but that's not exactly true. But when you're learning C++, a lot of the things that you learn in C can carry over into it. So uh, often, actually one of the reasons that C is better than C++ isn't actually about the program being written. So one additional difference is the compiler. And this is what is creating the actual machine code from the stuff that we are writing in C or C++. We write like int a equals one. Uh, the compiler takes int a equals one and it converts this into machine code, binary and an actual executable that can run right in the operating system or on the computer. So what uh, the, the way this does it is very complicated and there are lots of different compilers. This is a very advanced thing. But in general, the way compilers in C work makes it better for creating things like operating systems and really low level things where you don't have as much abstraction. You want direct control over the program. Uh, because C++ was made to allow for the abstraction and to be an object-oriented programming language, its compilers are not necessarily optimized for creating the best or, or even working with the super low-level systems. So sometimes you have to go with C because the compilers won't even work at, at that low of level with C++. But it all depends. It's just a, a difference between the two. And that can be a big contributor into why you would choose C++ versus C. Okay, so let's look at some actual examples. What is C good for? Well, as we said, maybe it's because of the compilers or maybe it's because of whatever else. But uh, C is good for operating systems. It's sort of the thing that your computer runs that encapsulates everything that you sort of see popping up. It manages like the different programs running. It manages where the windows are, how they interact with each other, all that sort of stuff. With operating systems, many are written in C++, but C is quite good for operating systems. And one of the uh, primary operating systems, Linux, is written in C. Now, programs where efficiency is of premium importance, those are sometimes written in C as well, mostly for older programs. Now, C++ is quite big, uh, especially for programs that you'll actually run on your computers. So some things like this that need high efficiency are games. Um, so if you've heard of the old game Doom, that was written in C. And there are a lot of others. There's a program called Blender, which is actually what I'm using right now. And that's a program where it's a uh, nice graphical user interface. It's a 3D program where I can construct stuff move tabs around, work with 
work with objects, as I said, all sorts of things. And I can draw on it. Very cool. And the interface with this was largely written in C. And because it's handling so much stuff, it's really important that it be efficient and it be able to be very consistent and not have any surprising things. And that's one example where you may want to go with a older system because just a lot of the kinks have been worked out because it's been developed for a longer amount of time. Uh, another thing is C is good for being used by other languages. So this is uh, things like libraries. So if you want increased functionality, if you need some more direct control over some aspect in a uh, operating system, for example, sometimes you'll use a C library to do that or to make it really fast in how it's computing. C libraries are very common. They they're in things like MATLAB and Python, and it makes it so you can have one instruction that does many things um, in MATLAB or Python at the sort of higher level. So you're sort of giving more general instructions and it, it knows instead of you telling it, uh, if you're talking to somebody and you're explaining how to build a house, right? You can tell them, okay, when you're laying the brick, you pick up a brick, you set it down close to where you can access it. You mix the mud, you pour the water in it. You uh, grab that mud, you grab your trowel. You, you don't have to actually tell them if they're an experienced person, how to actually go through all those steps. C is really made to be like a base person that's really, really fast, but doesn't know that much. And MATLAB and Python are really made to be like, you can be the supervisor that's kind of telling the very efficient person what to do instead of being the very efficient person and needing to write out the very detailed list of instructions for the low level program C. So C libraries provide some of the uh, advantages of both worlds because it'll be really fast, but it's fast to program. And that's a lot of the reason we wouldn't go a route like C. Now, what about C++? just to see a comparison, because as I mentioned, C++ is very highly correlated with C. It's a, uh, it's a programming language that has uh, been adopted in many of the places where C was in the past, and it's quite good at it. So some of the places C++ can be used and is chosen is in 3D software. So this thing's like uh, game engines where the computation has to be really fast and C++ is still really good for it, but you may not necessarily have to have the compiler difficulties that you do when you're working with like creating an operating system. So with 3D software, if you've heard of Unreal Engine, this is a game engine, which just means it's a a, an environment where you can create a game easier than creating one from scratch, uh, a computer game. So it's sort of a structure so that you can, you can just call up things like a, a object and specify that it has some gravity, specify its mass, specify all of that. And then it can handle like the physics of it if you turn on physics and it can handle the lighting so you don't have to actually handle the visualization. So this is all compacted into a engine, which is just a system similar to how MATLAB and Python can use C libraries, but do higher level, more like managerial descriptive programming. Uh, Unreal Engine works in a similar way to manage objects in like a game. Uh, another one is Unity. So Unity is another game engine. Works much like Unreal Engine, also written in C++. A lot of the Adobe applications. So this is something that isn't necessarily uh, 3D, but it's a, a software that really needs to be efficient. It's handling a lot of operations. It's dealing with, uh, in particular, like Adobe Photoshop, 
It's handling image editing. It's got these huge networks of pixels. It may have 1080 by 720 or whatever resolution images. And it uh, allows you to run all sorts of filters on it. And so it needs to be really quick in the GUI in the graphical user interface, and it needs to be very good at the computation. And so C++ is a good option there. Is also Premiere. This is a video editing software. So it's got some uh, frames, right? It's it's like handling an image, but it's maybe ten thousand images, um, all at different seconds. So with Adobe Premiere, obviously, again, computation is very important. And so they use C++ and it, uh, it's a pretty amazing program out there. Other options um, in C and C++, you'll do embedded systems. This is one that uh, works between the two of them. Um, if you've ever worked with Arduino, it uses a custom language, but it's basically built on C. It uses a lot of C++ libraries. So it uses sort of a combination of C and C++ uh, because embedded systems are just hardware. They're computers that, that aren't like a standard computer that's running a Windows operating system. It's something like a small computer that maybe it's in your fridge and it's used to manage um, keeping the water cold, but it also has some like smart functions. If you have like a smart fridge, it's an embedded system because it uh, does computations and and things, but it's, it's not like running Windows on it uh, necessarily. It's just an embedded system placed inside a fridge. Another example is like fitness watches. So fitness watches are something where you have an embedded system. You just have a computer and it's placed inside a fitness watch or other fitness device. Um, another is operating systems. So we said that some operating systems you really don't want to use C++ for because of the way the compilers work and it, it isn't as stable or as efficient really as a C compiler or the actual features in C++ that you're using may make it that way, but that doesn't uh, stop some people. One of the main proponents of using C is Linux creator Linus Torvalds. But the two most popular operating systems, the most popular desktop being Microsoft Windows, and the second most popular desktop being Max. And Windows is a lot written in C++ and Apple is similarly has a bit that's written in C++. A lot of the complicated systems use a combination of different things like Blender, the graphical user interface elements and the control structure there, but a lot of the computations are done in C++, a lot of the add-ons, so stuff that's built on top of Blender to provide additional functionality is written in Python. And that's just because it's got a big community that uses Python. And so they use Python because of that. So a lot of, a lot of things use a big combination of different things. And like when you see libraries with some other higher level language like MATLAB or Python, you can kind of get the best of all the worlds. So that's sort of why you see and what C is good for. So hopefully you learned a bit and uh, this can get you deciding what, what you really are interested in pursuing. If you want to learn more about C, want to go into C++, look into Python and MATLAB because that more interests you, great. But uh, these are all options. It's really just what you want to do with it. Uh, a great way of doing it is figuring out what interests you.
and then just come up with some projects. Then solve those projects, do them. Like, let's say you want to make a 3D printer, make a 3D printer. And while you're making it, just figure out what are the ways to do it? How are you going to approach this problem? And when you're going about actually approaching the problem and trying to find it or trying to find a solution to it, then you can see what sort of resources you can try. Okay, well, maybe I have an Arduino on there that I'm going to use. And so I'm going to use the C, C++ uh, variant on Arduino in order to make that. So that's really what I need to learn right now is the Arduino language. But if you're doing, let's say you want to make an application like Photoshop, maybe you go for C++ or maybe you pick another language like Java or something that uh, does good GUIs. So you can, uh, you have so many options and it really just ends up where you need to be able to find out how to solve problems, how to create things. And the way you can do that is figuring out some problems, developing some projects and, and solving it. If you're working at a company that uses this stuff, then great. You'll, you'll learn some of that stuff there. But, uh, outside of that, this is really the best way is cr through projects of your own. So, and finally, here's kind of a roadmap. If you want to learn a little bit more in C, keep working on that. If you want to start into C++ or some ideas on what sort of things you could, if you're interested in this or that, uh, find a programming language that you could go forward with and find a project you'd be interested in working on. Thanks, hope you learned a lot.